Check it out. So we're back with another episode of Brother and Sister, uh, talking about life, real life experiences, uh, coming to you to help you out, to help you through these troubled times and just give you a little advice on life and just real situations that people don't like to talk about. So today what we'll be talking about is we'll be talking about teenage pregnancy, raising a child as a teenager and how this affects uh, you. And first of all, we're going to be talking to Nala's or we're going to be talking to Pug about the teenage pregnancy because he was a teenager and taking his child to daycare mm-hmm. at the same time when he had a dream to be an NBA player. Then one day he finds out his girlfriend is pregnant when he's in the twelfth grade. Uh, well, it was actually it was the it was my sophomore year actually. So, because oh, oh. we Teen had Grable. we had we had we had him in the t- in the twelfth with well, that summer and then we came back to school. Oh, yeah. So wow. that was that was an experience. Um, like I said, uh, you know, playing ball, you know, on the court doing my thing or whatever. I used to get scoring points. They can compare me to a lot of different players. That was, it was awesome. Uh, then one day, she, my girlfriend at the time came in and told me she was like, "I'm pregnant," and my heart just sunk because it was. I mean, I'm I'm a kid myself, pretty much, and it was a situation that I just, you know, I didn't know how to go about it at the time. But like I said, she didn't want to have an abortion, so we had him. We made it work. So now let's tell me about how that felt to know that you had a dream and you was headed in the direction of your dream and you had the newspaper people looking at you from all over colleges uh, just like this picture um, that we always look at where it talks about reaching a new high and Nallis Banks gracefully dunks a basket during the pep rally on Friday uh, pep rally how does it make you feel when you look back on your life and uh, remember the times when you had these hopes and high dreams to venture out to the NBA and you was headed in that direction and then that choice or that life hit you and then you see yourself going in a totally different direction. Right. I mean, it was, it was really over, <clears throat> it was overwhelming at the time. Um, like I said, she came in the room and said she was pregnant and, you know, I just, I was lost. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say, you know, as a youngster, the first thing you think about is an abortion and, you know, and she pretty much wasn't having that. So, I mean, um, we had to go through with it. Um, the dreams was just, you know, I didn't look at basketball the same anymore. Um, you know, I was I, I was good at basketball and, you know, I go on the court and do my thing, but, like, my passion was kind of, it wasn't there as much anymore because, you know, I'm having a son on the way. You would think I would go harder, but it was just the way life was and, and you know, the, the home, how it was at home, and it was, was so many different obstacles that came at me that it was just really rough and you know we needed food on the table right then and you know just and I had to make it work at the time yeah and let's let's talk about those obstacles Uh, because you know I remember the story you know and I remember when everything transpired I was going through my own little stuff at the time as well but those obstacles not having you know that foundation to talk to somebody about this situation it just overwhelmed you right. how did you feel not having nobody to go to or talk to about this situation that, at that particular time you was you was in massachusetts at that particular time if i'm not mistaken with you uh i probably was in juvenile detention <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing with you I you know, know what it's, saying? it's funny now but it won't funny then <laughs> but, but yeah it won't funny then yeah but yeah just it, it was it was you know not having nobody to talk to uh uh, only person I had to talk to was pretty much her, because uh, nobody went around. You know what I'm saying? Um, and at this time, you guys was what, sixteen, seventeen yeah, years was old? About, yep, sixteen. So seventeen, seventeen, 17? eighteen in that area. But um, like I said, when she gave me that news, man, it was just rough, and I ain't had nobody to really talk to. Because now coming up, you know, all the guys around you coming up, first thing they say, man, have girls, girls this and girls that. You know, those guys gave me terrible advice, you know what I'm saying? Because when I came up in life and then realized it wasn't about having a bunch of girls and this and that, it was about being a man and taking care of your responsibilities. You know, I had to learn all that on my own. I had to learn pretty much everything on my own because I was raised up in an environment that was, you know, a lot of people was talking about everybody, and I just didn't want to do that. I, You know, this person that, that person this, that person that. 
you know, I didn't want to go through all that. So when I was younger, I always had my vision of when, when I get older and get on my own, I'm going to surround myself with people I want to be surrounded by that, that got positive energy. And that's pretty much what I did. But coming up through that situation with nobody to talk to, it was really rough. Um, you know, it was rough coming up. And the only people I really had to talk to was, you know, street guys. You know, I knew a bunch of street guys. So they went to school with us and a few of them dropped out of school and, you know, talking to them coming up and they weren't really the best guys to talk to, but they, you know, they was cool with me. So, you know, between that and then the street life, I kind of just combined everything together. Basketball kind of faded away. Cause like I said, we needed money at the time and, you know, want no food on the table. So we had to make it happen. So pretty much hit the streets and, you know, that, that wasn't the greatest choice, but, you know, I'd, I'd done a lot of things and seen a lot of people and, you know, if you ask me would I take it back, um, some things I would and some things I wouldn't because um, I learned a lot and it taught me a lot. So, I mean. Yeah. So well, let's talk about that environment, that environment that um, that you was in at this time where you didn't really have the people or the adult people who are the role models in your life to try to get you to um, – fix this situation in other words as, as well the like to the home life or working to take care of this child or give us a little bit of advice on how you went down the wrong road a little bit trying to take care of your child trying to be a man because that's what you that's what you learned from the street be a man take care of your child but you know and it's pretty much any means necessary but we know now from experience that's not what life is about you don't right. do any means, means necessary right just coming up and you know um, I want I want the gangster type. I was I had a lot of love in me. Um, yeah, you always been like that. You know, in that street life, you know, the, if this guy would mess up your money, they, these guys would beat him up. This and that. I, I want that type of guy. You know, what I'm saying I had a lot of love, and um, just in environments that just um, I was just looking for a way out, basically. Um, and like I said, you got a little money in, under your belt that you can kind of get out of that situation but getting the wrong getting money the wrong way was a bad thing because before you know it you're in it knee deep and it's like you know i got my bills paid but i got all this other stuff to look out for you got right. stick up kids you got police you got so many different people coming at you the snitches the uh, people get in trouble they go down there and tell on you i mean it's just it was so many things that it was just rough and just trying to figure it out as a youngster. Cause like I said, 17, 18 years old, just trying to figure it out. I mean, I wanted, I just had nobody to talk to and I couldn't, and you know, you wanted somebody to go to, but you can't expect nobody to teach you nothing that, that they, they didn't don't, know, yeah, you know? Because, you know, they and don't know. They didn't know. So and I, I can't, I'm not mad at nobody. And uh, you know, I had to hold myself accountable for every everything I did, you know what I'm saying? Cause like I said, if, if they didn't know, I couldn't expect them to teach me. But like I said, when I learned, you know, I went back and told others best I could anyway, you know, because um, cause you can't expect, you can't be mad at nobody to teach you something that they didn't know. Um, and, and I know uh, this is part of your life and everything, and it's a very, very difficult situation because I remember the situation, situation like yesterday. But, you know, when you got trapped up in this life and then you had the child, then here comes another child, but you get trapped up in this life and then you try to, do something different and get a job and leave that life alone. Um, I remember one time when you, you know, try to get on your, your feet and try to <laughs> yeah. get a job, you know, at Walmart. Yeah. And the next thing you know, when you at work, cause you was on a night shift at that time, uh, these guys come and kick your door in, you know, yeah. wanting money. Can you elaborate on that? Cause yeah. we're just trying to show you where this life can take you, where you don't even realize that it's taking you to because of the mentality of every other person or the person that has a negative vision and want to be the stick up kid. So we're just trying to show you two different sides to this story where he trying to get out of this life, didn't want to be in this life anymore, got him a job. And then here we go. We got a, um, uh, some stick up kids, three of them kicking right. his door in while he's at work. And his, uh, his, at this time he had married, her. it was his wife and he had two children there in the house and they break in a rob. Right. I mean, it was it was rough because, like I said, I, 
when I figured it out, now you know they really call it a trap for a reason. You know what I'm saying? It's the right. trap. It's a. It's basically a and trap. And we want to focus on that word right. trap and, and show you why. And for those out there that's still doing their thing, I, I, we're not saying it's a knock nobody because to each his own. You learn it. You get it when you get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, um, yeah, I wanted to go straight, so I uh, got me a little job or whatever. Started working. And um, you tell him you got a job at Walmart. You <laughs> <laughs> got, got you a job. Got me a little job at Walmart and yeah. whatnot. And um, like I said, I was at work. And I got a phone call. Like you know, she crying on the phone. She couldn't talk. She all hysterical. Like somebody kicked in the door and robbed us and tied us up. This and that. I'm like, what? And I'm at Walmart going crazy. I'm like, I got to go. So I rush home and find out what the situation is. And like, you never know who watching you. Um, Cause this incident, you know, I went to the streets, back to the streets, just to, cause I was very angry. I mean, I, I wanted to find out who done this. Um, so what I did was I went to the streets and I just kind of put it in a people's ear, like who done this? So, you know, I pay you to let me know who done this. Um, and before you know it, um, what was that, maybe it, a couple it, of months later. It, it actually was, you know, just a couple months later and it's, you know, the story is just so amazing. It's just ironic how things happened that someone had called and said that these guys had robbed them as well. And they had the same description. Right. And that let him know that these guys were still out there robbing people. So that same night that they told him this this day and that same night, you know, he made sure his house was secure and yeah. they came back to rob him that same night when he was told that that day again. And this time he was home. And unfortunately, these guys lost their life because he was prepared for the invasion on his family. And, you know, just tell us right. about it now. Because nobody wants to go through that and take a person's life or be right. devastated on a situation and all of this stuff on the news. And, you know, just how everything played out because this was... This was not what what you wanted in life. Right, definitely not what I wanted in life. Um, and like I said, I, I, you know, when I went out and just asked around or whatever, you know, I was angry, but, you know, I just prepared myself after that point. Still prepared this day. I mean, even I don't hustle no more. I don't do none of that. But just how people are so greedy and just how they think. Um, the negative. The negative vibe, the negative energy and, and people just after you, um, hey, I prepare myself. Um, so, and, and this is what we're trying to expose to let people know it's a better side of life. Um, because just like we said, Nalas, I mean, Pug didn't want to experience this. And when somebody else had another mindset, he had another mindset of a change mindset to try to go forward and do something different. But then this happened where someone had a negative mindset to try to collaborate, bring it to try to bring him back. And what we're trying to cause is a mindset shift to the positivity and let people know that you can thrive in life. So now let's tell us about how once you understood this and what happened and how you got through. Um, uh, thank God be the glory first and foremost. Um, because he was there the whole while. Like I said, um, right. I have, I had, had my house kind of rigged up. I had stuff at the doors where you couldn't just kick in the door. And I'm sitting in the, in the, on the couch chilling. I'm watching TV. The TV on my right, the door on my left. And like I said, I'm eating some chicken off the grill, and I'm just relaxing. All of a sudden, I heard the door just boo. So they kick in the door, but what I had on the door, it didn't give. So but I knew it was something wrong because they, they, cause I went to the back, you know, I grabbed mine and just I came back out blasting. Now, by the time I came back in the living room, they was in the house, and I just started shooting. And um, they were shooting at me. They were shooting at me because they robbed me. But they, I won't that when they the first time the first they time. But they had took a gun from me the and came back time. to rob me with my own gun. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know when I came out shooting, um, I shot the first one. I shot the second one. And like I said, the, if I shot the second one and the third one kind of at the same time because it was a it was a, a twelve gauge pump and the pellets, you know, the first one hit the guy in the fo- forehead, and the other one hit the other guy in the neck and shoulder, the pellets, and the first guy, you know, what I'm saying I shot the first guy, 
for second two, and I had to shoot the first one again because I didn't know if he was faking because he had a gun in his hand. I didn't know if he was faking, so I had to make sure because my family in the house, and I was just so enraged, so so angry, and so just in disbelief that these guys would try to do this to people, and they had robbed people all up and down the East Coast once we found out what the situation was. I mean, they had robbed a lot of people. And that night, even all kinds of people came with yeah. that night to identify yeah. the guys. Um, yeah, they were the ones that robbed me. I mean, they robbed blacks, whites. They yeah. robbed everybody. And, and and that's the other thing, you know. It was to the point, you know, and this is why we want to talk about these tough situations. It was to the point that, you know, it was blacks and whites, you know, that they had robbed. But we was kind of hysterical with this situation because this is not something we wanted to see or happen in life, but people wanting to celebrate him doing this. And this is something he did not want to do. Right. It's just something that was brought to him because of the negativity and just being on the wrong side for a little while. But, you know, when we realized people wanting to have a pig picking and stuff, we was like, no, well, this is not what we well, want. This, this is not this, what, this, this is not in something to enjoy or celebrate. nothing to glorify. You know what I'm saying? Only thing I glorify out of this situation is God was there with me. Because right. when them guys shot at me, it was like the bullets just right. went all the way around. Right. Almost like a cartoon. Right. How when they shoot in the cartoon and the bullets go around, the pattern, that's how it was. Um, it was it was a terrible situation, man, because, you know, you don't want to take nobody's life over something stupid, you know, for money. Like, you know. Yeah, but, and. And and when I got the phone call that someone had broke in again in his house, you know, I just turned around and f- just was flying back home to his house. And I just saw the bodies laying on the ground. Well, one of the bodies. Well, I just saw the sheet covered over the person. Right. And I ran straight thinking that this was him on the ground when he had to get out the car calling my name and I heard him calling my name but I was trying to get to who this person was because I thought it was my brother so I could just imagine the families that had to suffer through this because of the bad choices so that's why with me and Pug bringing these real life stories to you uh be interviewing a lot of people who had a lot of different stories as well but we want to talk about this stuff and bring these live stories to you so you can understand some truth in life and also understand that it's another path that you can bridge over to and get yourself out of it. Let's get on a positive note. So now let's share with us the positive and how you, you know, kind of got your life back on track and moved away and, and, and push yourself forward out of that. Um, well, it kind of got to Pug. the last, huh? I keep saying now. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it kind of got to the last straw. Like I said, um, cause when you like, when you like, you know, ain't had no job, and you like, you got all these bills, and the only way, you, only thing you ever really did was hustle. You know what I'm saying? You're like, well, how am I, how am I gonna pay my bills? I can't just go to Walmart, and all this is gonna take up all these bills. You can't get a job at McDonald's or whatever the case may be. And nobody won't hire you like that back then, because like back then, there was no internet, it was no cell phones like that. It won't none of that. Um, and like I said, nobody ain't hiring you, and just you're trying to figure yourself out. But I had went to prison. Um, but not for that, of course, because I was straight self defense. Um, I did something else, and I went to prison, and I had came home, and it was just in my mind, I'm not gonna go back to hustling, because I went to prison for like two years, and it was when I got out, I said, okay, this is the reset button, and I did dibble and dabble a little bit when I first got out, but I had an incident where God was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you know, I had to run, <laughs> and it was just, and that, after that, I was like, no more. Um. I got up with a friend, and he started this business, and when he started the business, I was like, man, I need a job, and he, he hired me because the business had just started. It wasn't but a couple of people working there. It had just started fresh, and when I got my job, I didn't look back. And and, I've been, I've been and, there for a while, and it just transformed my whole life into something positive because I didn't have to hustle no more. I mean, I hustled, but I didn't. it was all legal. Right. You know what I'm saying? I hustled legal, trying to make ends meet, and... You know, but and and I realized like going to prison and stuff like that, you would see the average man working. He was always moving himself up. But you know, when you hustle, you get caught, you get knocked back down. The average working man always moving up. You hustle, you get caught, you get knocked back down. So you always got to hit this restart button. So when I didn't go back to hustling, and I ain't have to hit, hit the restart button, and and it was just it was in my past. It was in my rear view. I never looked back. You know what I'm saying? And all kinds of stuff started happening when I started doing positive things and God just started blessing me from all different angles. Um, and he continuously does it. He continuously and, and does it. When you look back, you just see, 
you know, with you trying to make the right choices and decisions and also trying to honor God and asking God to forgive you for your wrong and all of that, you see that he created a whole nother path for your life. Right. Um, this is probably my last question, but can you share with us how he has blessed your life and can you give some the next people or the people out there advice as to life on this situation and how not to go back? Um, best thing I can tell you is you got to believe. Um, God that probably don't give it to you when you when you want it, but He gonna give it to you right on time. Amen. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know you be like I want it, I want this, I want that. You want it so bad, just stay steady, stay focused, and it'll happen. It'll happen in the right way. Because sometimes you can ask for something and you be careful what you wish for. You know what I'm saying? Be careful what you ask for because sometimes you might not want it that early. But like that's why I say God give it to you on time because it's on his time. It's perfect timing. Um, and like I said, I stayed focused and I didn't go back. And, you know, so many blessings was happening. Uh, you know, my finances, my living situations, you know, bought a house, bought another house, you know, cars. Yep. You know, and it wasn't all about the material things, but it was, you know, just a beautiful family point blank right. all around, you know. And like I said, doing the right thing, doing the right thing, doing, doing the right, right thing. thing. And he also doing the right thing when no one's looking. Right. That's the whole key. You yeah. do the right thing when nobody's looking. The uh, other day I was at the grocery store and, you know, it was, I was walking to the car <laughs> and I seen this. Uh, it was this truck and it had a, 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 a handicap sign in it. And uh, it was like maybe it was I seen a bunch of money, well, a bunch of money. It was a handful of. It was, I seen fives and ones, whatever. It was sitting right there at the truck. And um, I know as soon as that person got out that truck, you know, they dropped it. So I went to my truck and just was waiting on that person to come out so I can give them their money. And um, it took a minute. They never came out. So I put it right up under their um, windshield wiper because I wasn't going to take the money with me because it won't mine. That's right. It won't mine. And I wouldn't have felt comfortable with it. And it was like, when I counted, it was like $9. But right. they might have needed that $9. Mm-hmm. That's right. They went to the grocery store to get something. But the thing of it was, it was their money. Right. And I wanted them to have it back. You know, that's why I said doing the right thing when nobody's looking because you get you get paid for stuff like that and you get blessings for stuff like that, you know? So, that's right. you know, you just got to you just gotta play your course right and just be uh, put yourself to doing good things, you know what I'm saying? Because that negative energy, what you push out is what you're going to get back. You push negative out, negative is going to come back. You push good energy out, good energy is going to come back. So you definitely want to stay on the good side, man. Um, like I said, when I got out the streets, I ain't never looked back, man. Cause I didn't, you know, when you're young and you making money, you think you're doing it, but you didn't. Re- I didn't realize, you know, you got to stick up kids, you got the people watching, you got the, the state troopers, you got the sheriffs, you got the undercovers, you know, the feds, all this stuff. You don't really. I wasn't thinking about it at the time. All I was thinking about was putting food on the table. But right. when it happened, and this all this stuff came about, I'm like, man, what have I got myself into? Right. You know, it was like afterwards. Afterwards, really like mean. what? And you're already stereotype. Right, I'm already stereotype. You know what I'm saying? Catching felonies and stuff like that. You don't realize what it does. What it does for your future, yeah. and like you know, and it was it was a blessing to get but out. We thank God you overcame. Uh, automatically. We yeah. overcame. overcame. But we appreciate you for joining us for another episode of Brother and Sister. We do want to get Pug back um, to help grieving families as well because not only did he go through this situation, just like we said, we've been through so many situations that we All want right. to help you with that we want when Alice, when Pug feels comfortable that he could talk about losing his 18-year-old son in a car accident right. suddenly with no nothing to think of but just a phone call basically yeah. to identify a son and going through this and this grieving process and i still say sometimes to him a lot that he still has not properly grieved and it's been now what 10 years right it's been 2012 yeah so we want to get him back to help help us and help parents who have went through this experience and um, so he can help give us a little advice on that as well with the coping methods of losing a child at 18 year old and when his son was on the great road of going to college and he was really on the road as well as uh, being in the newspapers with um, colleges looking at him wanting to go be an NBA player because he was an awesome basketball player so yeah. 
when Pug uh, fills up to it, we want to bring him back to help other families and our community that we're trying to serve because that's what we want to do, serve communities with real life experience situations and how we overcame these situations because we want to help you grow and we want you to have that change mindset. Right. And for those out there, for the youngsters, man, the young kids coming up, man, um, put yourself around something positive, somebody positive, positive energy. You know what I'm saying? Like I, like I said, I, don't, I ain't here to knock nobody because I know how it can be. You know, the street life, I know how it is. You know what I'm saying? But when you when you finally get tired, you get tired. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to be no gangster and all that because the gangster, right. the federal government is the real gangsters. Right. We ain't no gangsters right here. Man. And, and parents, <laughs> uh, just a little advice for you. Get your children involved in as much as you can to see what they like so that they can um, – you know, because they say the idle mind is a devil's playground so that their mind is not idle. Let's get try to help get these children into different community activities and and around these positive people. If you're not able to do it, try to find them a positive role model to help them to guide them. Right. Yep. So like I said, uh, stay positive, man. Um, like I said, we got if anybody want to be on the podcast, just hit us up. Let us know. Um, you can. We also got um, our team uh, behind us that d- develops websites, marketing material, all that you want to uh, that you see us doing. We have a whole team behind us that, if you're interested in them getting behind you and supporting you and what you're trying to do in your business, just let us know. Uh, we can get all that information to you, uh, pricing everything. But we have a whole entire team that's ready to work for you as well. Yeah, yeah, just let us know. Like I said, brother and sister podcast, and we out. Chill.